Pompiani here bringing you another episode of From the Top presented by Armina Stone and I am so excited to have these two lovely ladies with me today. They are from the American Institute of Architects. So right here sitting next to me is Dina Schneider. She is the president of the Pittsburgh chapter here of AIA and then we have Bea Spolidoro, <laughs> beautiful last name. She's from Italy and she is the first vice president of AIA for the Pittsburgh chapter. So ladies, thank you so much for coming on today. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yes, so Thank I know you have big roles with AIA, and I want to talk all about that. But, Dina, you are also involved with architecture. You've been involved for many years, so have you, Bea. And you are with what firm? Strata Architecture. You're with Strata, and Bea, you're with Fisher. So Fisher. I, mm -hmm. I want to talk both about your different firms, but I also want to focus on AIA and all that you do here with the Pittsburgh chapter. So first, and we could start with you, Dina, tell me how you got involved in this industry. Oh, sure. I've been involved for several years. Um, uh, I came to Pittsburgh. I'm originally from Massachusetts, so I came here to go to school and I fell in love with Pittsburgh. So I've been here for over 30 years, kind of practicing wow. in the profession and just love it. Yeah, well, we're happy that you chose Pittsburgh. And you went to Carnegie Mellon? Carnegie Mellon, yeah. Drew and they there. have a great program great there. Program, yeah. So um, Strata's been a firm for uh, just over 20 years. We've been here in the Pittsburgh market. We actually have a Pittsburgh and Philadelphia office and a full range of cross-disciplinary markets that we work in here. So it's really fun stuff. I love it. So, Bea Spolidoro, <laughs> tell me about you. And where are you from in Italy? So I am from Milano. And uh, um, Milano is definitely the uh, capital for fashion and design in, uh, in Italy. And that's absolutely how my love for design and architecture started. And I studied in Milano. I got my degree in architecture there. And then three months later, I was already in Pittsburgh. And here is where I started my career uh, ever. <laughs> <gasps> I love that. Well, I'm excited to hear that because my family is 100% Italian mm -hmm. too, so it's a cool connection. <laughs> so you ladies are involved, and you've been involved for many years with AIA here in the Pittsburgh area, so tell me a little bit about it and, and what you do there. I know you're the president, you're the first vice president, so tell me about your roles. So it's, it's a member organization that supports the architects in the community, you know, Western Pennsylvania. We also uh, work with the national organizations and the state organizations. But really our role is kind of oversight and serving the memberships. Um, a lot of health, self, safety, and welfare things that we focus on, but I, there's a lot of other things. Bea, if you want to hit on a few things. Yeah, I mean, I can speak for like the reason why I particularly appreciate uh, um, being involved with AIA is uh, um, it, it, it's really also a community of, of uh, peers and members, like people, friends. Um, I actually started being involved with the young architects component of the of the chapter, and it was like. Uh, I mean, really helpful. I made new friends, but also like I really had guidance also how to become a registered architect. And then through AIA, there are different leadership positions. And, uh, you know, little by little, I joined the board and now I am first vice president. <laughs> I love it. So could anybody join if they wanted to become a member and get involved? Yeah, primarily it's architects that are members, but we also have affiliate members that are not architects but have professions that work alongside with architects quite often. Um, and it's really kind of bringing that knowledge base to people who work in that community uh, out in the field. And um, some of the highlights and areas that we focus on are a bit of sustainability, so um, environmentally sensitive design in construction in the community, um, healthy design, uh, COVID related stuff really was in the forefront um, over the past year in trying to make our buildings that we're in as he healthy as possible. A um, lot of other things that are really important to our built environment that we quite often don't think about until you engage an architect or a designer in the project. Mm -hmm. 
So tell me more about what it's like being an architect. Like, what are some of the projects that you work on or that you've really loved working on that stand out to you? Sure. Um, so uh, I think that the, the, the thing that I like the most about being an architect is really the collaborative nature of the profession. Um, design is absolutely um, a team sport. <laughs> like it, it's not just about uh, the architect doing a pretty drawing. It's it's really about uh, collaborating with our partners, with the manufacturer, with vendors, with our engineers, uh, with the city. I mean, the, for example, if you work in an historic neighborhood, you need to. Um, deal with all the uh, regulations. So we have to work with the city to make our cities and our communities like better uh, for everybody. So as architects, uh, um, there is so much that we do that uh, it, it's not a boring job. There is a lot about interaction, uh, a lot of uh, like problem solving and thinking and lots of value <laughs> on the table for sure. Yeah, I can imagine there's a lot of problem solving that has to be done throughout each project that mm -hmm. you work on. Well, and I think we act as facilitators in that process. So you typically have a client and a goal that they're trying to achieve in, in creation of a place for people that are going to be occupying that building. And really, as problem solvers, we kind of take our expertises to the table and kind of help facilitate that process. So it's a lot of listening, um, understanding, and then figuring out what's the best way to move that, that project forward. So what have been your favorites that you've worked on? Uh, you know, for me, I love those complex projects that bring lots of layers together. So what's unique about our firm is we have landscape architects, interior designers, and architects all together at the table quite often meeting clients' needs. So we, we can get a project that actually has all of those layers. So the inside of the building, the shell of the building, and the site, and really um, look at that project and weave those things all together um, is just really a great, exciting project to j dive into for us. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of people that you have to team up together to work to get something done. Now, what if I wanted to build a home, like a really beautiful, unique house? Can I come to you, to one of your firms? And, like, could we work together on that? Absolutely. I, I know you do a lot of big projects, and you were involved with Market Square, right? Yes, yes. I read that. That is so cool. I mean, what an interesting thing. Yeah. I love it. But yeah, if, you, if somebody wanted to come to you to do a home, you know, a personal project, is that something that you could do? Yeah, uh, varying uh, architecture firms do that. I know, Bea, you probably do single family residential projects mm -hmm. more than we do because we're a little bit larger firm, so depending on the firm size. But we do a mixture of those kind of projects too. Oh, oh, that would be too cool. So if somebody was, you know, getting, I know things change all the time and industries evolve and, and change so much, but if, if somebody was looking to become an architecture or to become an architect, what would they need to do to, you know, succeed and get in front of somebody else? Because it's a competitive field, but I don't know. I, I want to know what advice you would have to give to them. Yeah, I mean, um, like you become like uh, you say, you mean like becoming registered architect, for example. Well, so the first, I will start with a misconception that you have to be good at math because uh, that's important, but it's not uh, a deal breaker. Personally, I'm more like a humanistic, like people-centered mind kind of person. Um, so uh, it's really a profession that offers a little bit to anybody, like if you're like whatever, like a right brain, left brain, you know, kind of person you consider yourself, um, you certainly have to um, to uh, enter like a um, university program that uh, uh, is uh, uh, certified, like for architecture that allows you to uh, start uh, like with the right foot, so to speak. Although there are different ways to, to get through architecture. So um, for, you mentioned CMU, CMU is a great school, but there are certainly other schools that uh, can bring you there. Um, and then um, once you get your, uh, your diploma, you will need to start uh, your experience, uh, like co collection, literally collecting hours of experience working under another architect. And I think uh, it's very nice that in architecture there is a lot of mentorship opportunities, mm -hmm. and then um, like eventually there are different state regulations and national regulations. But you will take different tests. Uh, you can prepare, uh, take your test, uh, and then eventually you become a licensed architect. As Dina mentioned before, 
uh, really we uh, the focus of our profession is like a health um, wellness uh, and uh, um, uh, healthcare wellness and uh, um, uh, welfare for uh, our society. So um, not only design, but a lot of other things that are very important. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people don't realize that architects actually sit, we take registration exams, we're licensed. So um, it's very important to go through that process to become licensed. And that's, that's one of the benefits of hiring someone who is actually a registered architect on projects. Mm -hmm. We know the building codes, we have the expertises, and, and if we need to bring a specialist into a project, we work with a lot of structural engineers, mechanical engineers, specialty engineers who can help with a project along the way. At AIA specifically, what programs do you have there to offer people who are wanting to learn more about the industry? Sure, sure. Um, we do a lot of outreach to the community to try to educate not only um, youth who might be going up um, through K through 12 schools and le letting them understand what architecture is all about, but also um, we link up with the college and universities. Um, there is an AIAS for students, so basically um, helping them along the way and also just um, engaging uh, people within the communities. One of the big things we encourage people to do is actually volunteer. So as architects, mm -hmm. we need to get out in our communities, sit on boards, uh, participate in homeowners um, associations, um, volunteer in your schools, uh, mm -hmm. participate in those levels of things so people understand the value of architects and we can help um, projects, programs, other things that are going on out there with, with our knowledge base that we have. So. Mm -hmm. We call that uh, like a citizen architect. It's mm -hmm. a really a component uh, that is very important of uh, our profession. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. now I know you both knew what you wanted to do for a long time. But was there anything I know, Bea? You mentioned living in Italy that really inspired you and made you want to get into this field. But what really, you know, when was the time where you said, okay, this is definitely what I want to do? Was there something specific that inspired? You, Dina? Yeah, you know, for me, I am more of the problem solver. So a lot of what I do is more business centric on the, des the architecture side. So you see the full spectrum quite often in a lot of firms. Some people are very heavy in design. I am more, um, I love being around people and helping people empower themselves to be great designers and work with clients. So probably early on, my passion for art and design and architecture lined up with the business side of how to do things and make things um, come to fruition. So I think you know, fairly early on, I wanted to be an architect, but I easily gravitated more to the business side of what we do in architecture. So. Mm -hmm. And when you were in Italy, was there a, what, I've never been to Milan. I want to go so terribly. One day I'm going to get there, Bea. But is, what is like the most sought after place or destination or buildings to see there? Is, is that kind of what well, sparked your? Well, I will say that uh, Milano is a, an exceptional city because it's a great mix of, uh, um, well, the certain historic portion of the city um, with old buildings. But then inside of these buildings, there is a lot of shops that, for example, are selling um, very modern furniture or very modern art. So since uh, I was very little, I was immersed in the complexity of a city that really deals with old and new. And Milano, compared to other Italian cities, was heavily bombed in Second World War and uh, rebuilt, uh, rebuilt new. So. Milano doesn't have the kind of history that you can find in Florence, you can find in Rome, but there is a um, really an uh, a, a, a international, like a modern, contemporary feeling, um, and uh, it, it's it's really uh, stimulating. It re it's really interesting. Right now, um, if I had to say, like people going to Milano. Uh, definitely don't, don't miss the center of the city with the Duomo, the Galleria Vittorio Emanuele, of course, that's historic and wonderful. Oh, it sounds so nice. But uh, there is also like a, a, a new uh, skyline. We call it, we now have a skyline. Oh. And there is like a very modern buildings. Um, in, for, for example, Piazza Gai Aulenti. Actually, that, uh, she uh, was um, a female architect, very important. And we dedicated a, a new area to her. There is like a wonderful park uh, next to the plaza and um, 
lots of skyscrapers that we never had. So I found it like very exciting. And I actually leave, my, my family lives uh, close by, so when I go back, I oh, yeah. always walk there. <laughs> That's so nice. Well, since you're both not originally from Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. how would you describe our city? Oh, I think that Pittsburgh has just wonderful layers of history here. So that's a little bit what kept me here. So just being able to see the diversity of ethnic backgrounds, layers of history that happened over time, um, a little bit of kind of the industri the revolution that happened after and revitalization that happened after the steel industry kind of closed down and the potential that is in so many properties and buildings that's here. That to me, that's what I love, the passion of the history in being able to work on these projects. I, I second Dina uh, and I can add that um, before coming to Pittsburgh, I didn't know I was uh, so much into people. <laughs> and actually, I am so happy because uh, um, uh, in, in my daily activities, I can really interact with people. And some people have bigger projects. Some people have like smaller projects. The complexity is, is different. But I just love uh, like all this diversity and this complexity and how we can help people. Like Every project is different. It's truly different. So um, I, I find that like uh, fascinating. I don't know if it's only in Pittsburgh, but certainly Pittsburgh is particularly welcoming. It's uh, um, it can be also challenging in a number of ways. So for problem solvers, it's a perfect place. <laughs> <laughs> and we talked a lot about how problem solving is a big part of your jobs. Mm -hmm. How would you say you know, as a whole, do you like as an architect? How do you? bring together the community, whether it's a project you're working on, or I feel like everything you do, you're really involved with a big team. It's not just you working on a project. Yeah, I, I mean, I think community engagement is probably one of the most challenging things we as architects and designers do, which is you are quite often bringing people with different perspectives, different needs together to problem solve. Um, a lot of urban planners um, and architects spend a lot of time understanding how do you engage people, ex being able to make sure you're hearing all the voices that are there and designing for a, a group of people, um, which is very challenging. Large buildings, outdoor public places, um, spaces uh, for um, varying ages and types of people that might be using it. Um, it's really taking that time to hear and understand the concerns and problems they might be challenged with. Mm -hmm. I, I can add the, that it's a lot of listening, uh, taking good notes. I, I believe in taking lots of notes. <laughs> and I think that probably because English is in my first language since the beginning, I would really take like almost like one-on-one -on -one notes. And in, before joining Fisher Architecture, I was working for another firm, wonderful place, uh, uh, it's called Rothschild Dino Collaborative in the Strip District, and I I think uh, um, it's it's really um, you need to be humble when you interact with the community. You have to be thoughtful, and uh, in in design it's really about uh, understanding that people come from different backgrounds, uh, and um, it, it really it takes time. It design good design takes time. And actually, that's sometimes a, a bit of a challenge, not only working with like a large community, but on any project. Um, time is very important, so. Mm -hmm. Gotta be patient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> that really, patience can s save you money and time and costly mistakes. And uh, uh, of course, you have to trust uh, your team of experts, but that's the value, like we, we can help you. We've been through this before, so. You are experienced architects, I could tell. Or are there any big events or uh, big happenings going on with AIA now or the summertime? Um, this fall, we are uh, preparing for our Design Pittsburgh event where we celebrate design, um, 
give out awards for oh. uh, celebrating great design in the community. We party hard. Oh, <laughs> tell me more. <laughs> so w this is coming up in the fall. Yes, in the fall. Yes. Oh. And it, it's really a wonderful occasion. Also, it's not only about architects. We are like everybody in the industry, the owners, the clients, uh, our structural engineer, the mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, uh, our manufacturer. We have. It's really a phenomenal uh, opportunity and uh, also to see what kind of projects are on display. Uh, and um, so the, it's, uh, um, we're still finalizing the details, but we know there will be September 30th, and it will be in the north side. So oh. um, yeah, stay tuned. Oh, cool, <laughs> stay tuned. And I'm sure you'll have more on your website, yes. so people Absolutely. can find out more information. I have a question that I'm just curious about. If you weren't an architect, what do you think you would be doing? Do you think you would sp still be in this field? Maybe designing for you, Bea. Maybe I know you're big on the problem-solving side of it. Maybe more. I don't know. What would you say? You know, I think I would be into fashion design. My grandma used to be a, a tailor, um, and oh, she taught wow. me how to sew. And I really, really grew up with a sewing, a mini sewing machine. I would do that. Oh, <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Yeah, and it was interesting. Um, my career kind of started out in the community development realm, so really probably somewhere in there I could see myself mm -hmm. have gone. Oh, very um, nice. Yeah. Well, if our listeners want to learn more information about AIA, if, you know, if they want to be an architect or if they just want to get involved, become mm -hmm. a member, well, what's the best way to do so? Uh, we can be found online, search through the AIA. We have um, a couple of staff person, executive director, who's great at kind of answering questions and direct people reach out to us, search us online. Yeah, the, uh, the website is uh, uh, www.aiapgh.com and uh, uh, we can help like emerging professionals, uh, uh, retired professionals, uh, uh, very busy professionals. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is also a group uh, um, that is uh, somehow affiliated with AI Pittsburgh for women in the profession. Uh, it's called Women in Design, uh, the Pittsburgh chapter. So lots of way to get involved. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> have you ever asked Dina, have you ever asked Bea to say anything in Italian? No. Uh, because I want her to say something in Italian. It's <laughs> Your accent is so beautiful, and it's hard to believe English is not your first language because you speak it beautifully. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Can you say something for us? I'm Italian, and I should know how to speak Italian. I know nothing. All right. If I'm you just say, like, hi, my name is Bea, and I'm at Armina Stone. Uh, buonasera. Uh, mio nome è Bea, e sono qui ad Armina Stone. E grazie a Selina <laughs> per avermi uh, come ospite uh, con Dina. <laughs> oh. So, did you say thanks for your hospitality? Yes, exactly. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, also for having, like, Dina and I here. Oh, I love it. <laughs> you guys are so much fun, and I thank you so much for coming on here today. I do have one other question, and we always like to end the show with this. Just a little, you know, outro of singing. So we just have to sing a little bit. It's, it's really easy. All we do is sing the jingle, which is, ooh, Armina Stone. So that's it. So okay. we can do it together. Mm -hmm. I'll count us down. Are you ready? Okay. Sure. Okay. Three, two, one. Ooh, Ooh Armina Stone. Stone. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Thank you both so much for coming on. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.